Welcome to the second video in this 3D platformer tutorial series. Um, today we're going to be downloading another asset from the asset store um, to kind of help us build a world for us to explore. And then we're also going to be creating a new C Sharp script uh, to handle when we fall off of this platform, we can kill off the player. So if you're enjoying the series, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe down below, share it with your friends. Uh, and I hope you enjoy the series. Alright, so first thing uh, I want to do is I want to get rid of this cube. Because the only reason why we had this was as a temporary floor to kind of test out how our player works. Um, but we're not actually going to use this cube at all. So I'm just going to go ahead and click it and click delete. And then let's head over to the asset store and navigate to this page here for the Sci-Fi Platforms 3D Models. It's a free package here. So basically it's just a few different types of platforms that we can kind of just put together and build something kind of cool. So go ahead and download and import that. It's not a huge file, so it shouldn't take too awful long. Um, I think we're going to keep everything in this this time, um, except for this uh, demo scene here. We're not going to use that, so go ahead and uncheck that. Unless you want to check out how uh, uh, what the guy has built with this, go ahead and feel free to import that and check it out. But we're not going to be using it at all for anything. So uh, go ahead and hit import, and we'll sit here and wait for uh, it to import for a moment. So... Alright, so now that it's done with that, we now have, if you look in our asset folder, we now have this uh, Sci-Fi Platforms 3D Models uh, folder. We can go ahead and open that, and what we're going to be looking in is the Prefabs folder. So these are all of uh, the pre-made objects that, that, that this package already has with its textures and, and materials and, and everything like that. So um, if we go back into our scene view... Uh, what we can do is we can just uh, click on any one of these and just drag them into our scene. We can, if you open up this area here, it's this uh, gray bar down here. You can see a little preview of which item is uh, selected. And we got a few cool different little things in here. So we got a couple of hexagon little, I don't know, walk pads or something like that. Maybe we can use uh, something as like a starting point or or maybe a button of sorts. I don't know. But uh, there's this giant, th this uh, this pillar here that we can use just, I'm assuming for, I don't know, maybe just decoration or if, uh, or anything else. I don't know. We can figure something out to do with this guy here. A um, couple of platforms, a couple of wires, uh, looks like a little fence type thing. So yeah, it's kind of cool. So, let's go ahead and drag one of these in here. I'm going to go ahead and put in... Oh, let's do... Let's do this guy right here. So, we can go ahead and reset the transform on this guy right here. And now we have a cool little platform to work on. So, let's make sure that he doesn't just fall through these platforms and it looks like he collides with them just fine. And... Yeah, we got a little platform to work with. So let's go ahead and start building some sort of small little world that we can kind of test out a couple of different functions in. So uh, let's... How are we going to do this? So let's go up to the top view by clicking the Y button up here, what the Y toggle. And I'm just going to go ahead and highlight this. Actually, before we do that, I'm going to rename this to, uh, let's say, platform, uh, oh geez, what was this, uh, four, three by six, so let's go three by six. Oh, you know something? I apparently don't know my numbers, so, uh, <laughs> let's change that to three by six, just so I can kind of keep track of where all of these are at. I'm going to drag that down to the bottom because I just want to keep these three, for now, separated from any other objects that we're going to be putting into the scene. So, let's go ahead and 
highlighter platform and I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to just drag it over to the side here to make sure that it is that we have a decent little area to start walking on make sure those are touching perfect so and I don't know maybe I'll pull in one of these hexagons here like that make sure it's sitting on the floor yeah so let's actually you know I'm just going to reset the transform to make it easy and go back to the top view so maneuvering around in a 3D space can be kind of difficult sometimes. So it takes a little bit of, of getting used to. So feel free to just kind of play around and see what see how you can maneuver around and get things to in position uh, how you want them to be. So um, let's see. What else do I want to do? Let's grab... This guy right here, drag that in, reset the transform on it. And I reset the transform on these every time because I will show you here in a second what could easily happen. That I mean, it's not a huge deal by any means, but uh, it was definitely kind of annoying for me to have this happen. Basically, what will happen is sometimes it'll, like have this number be super, super high, so your piece ends up way up here, but you're looking at it from this view, So, and you're in orthographic mode, so it all looks exactly the same distance away, and then when you swap back over to this side, you can see all of your pieces are kind of messed up. Here, I'll show you what I'm talking about, because this was actually kind of a little irritating for me. So if I were to, let's say, drag this guy in here, you can see actually right now, our y axis is set to 165 70 point or 165.976 so and from this angle here that it, it looks fine to us right here so i can sit here and put this into place and let's say i duplicate this and drag it up and then i don't know i put this over here and i'm going to put that like right there or something like that i don't know if we go back over to this, to the X axis view on the side, let's see, you'll see, so it looks like our, uh, our little fence thing pillar got to the right spot where we wanted it, but we don't have those extra platforms right now. Those extra platforms, if I can find them, oh, see, we've already lost them. Oh, there they are. Or way up here. See what I mean? So, and now it's just a game of trying to bring this all the way down for it to fit right with our world. So that's the reason why I always like to reset the transform. Uh, just so everything, if anything, starts off in the exact same position and I know where everything's at in the world. Because if you're working on like some sort of like huge world or something like that, you don't want to lose any of your pieces in some random spot of that world. It's going to be impossible to try and find. Um, I mean, I guess you could always click it in the hierarchy up here, and and if you hit the F button, it'll focus in on it. But I mean, it I don't know. It's just kind of annoying. So, but anyways, let's go ahead and just basically end that I'm gonna duplicate this right here bring that over duplicate it again bring it over and I just want to drag in one more of these like that so now we have just this little simple basic world for us to move around in there's not really much about it yet we can always add things to it if we want I'm not planning on making the full-on game in this tutorial series. I just want to show how to make the different aspects of this. So I'm not going to go into uh, super detail on uh, level design or anything like that. I'm going to leave that to you. You're, you have the creative mind to do this. This is your game. I don't want you to just follow this tutorial step for step and create an identical full-on, full-fledged game. So... Um, 
feel free to be completely creative with this. Uh, do whatever you want. You could even, if you wanted to, go into the asset store, find other types of platforms and objects that that you might want to put in into your game, or if uh, you want to, or if you know how to work with Blender or something like that, and you can create your own uh, models for different for for different aspects of your game. Feel free to go ahead and do that and build the game that build the game you want. So. But anyways, so now if we go ahead and hit play here, we have this little platform area for us to run around in. Um, so yeah, this is actually kind of cool. I kind of like these, uh, uh, I like this asset here that we downloaded. So, perfect. So now what I really want to do is I want to get into a little bit of scripting um, because it gets annoying at the very beginning of this game when we're trying to develop it if we are to fall off or something like that on accident. Um, I don't, we can't do anything at this point. Uh, we have to stop and replay the game in order to get back to what we were trying to accomplish. So, I mean, so what I want to do is I want to first off make it so that our player can die when he falls off. Um, and it's going to be, we're going to do something really simple with it. We're just going to basically kill off the player when he falls off, and then we're going to restart the scene. Um, and, and that's that. So, <clears throat> first thing I would like to do, actually, before we get into that, I want to actually organize this a little bit. Hang on. So I want to make sure that our player, our directional light, and our main camera are up towards the top. I'm going to go ahead and create an empty game object. And I'm going to rename this empty game object ground. Oh, ground. And I just want to drag all of these ground objects into that game object. And the reason why I'm doing this is mostly so that I can just collapse this. Uh, I don't like having all of these extra objects. If you're building a larger world, you'll see this small little area that we have. It's got quite a bit in it already. Um, I'll bet you can imagine uh, what a larger world would look like in this hierarchy. It's just an absolute mess if you don't keep this organized. So I'm going to just collapse that. And now what I want to do is I'm going to create a new, uh, uh, we're going to do another empty object. And let's rename this, uh, death pit, just like that. And what this death pit is, let's go ahead and reset the transform on this. What this death pit is going to be, we're, we're basically just going to have an invisible, uh, little floor um, underneath our ground object. It's going to be uh, like down here or something. I'll, I'll show you. So let's go ahead and just add a component to it. Um, but anyways, we're going to use this so that when our player um, collides with it, it, the game knows that it's falling. The game knows that the player is supposed to die, so it's going to kill off the player and restart the level or however we want to do it. Uh, so we're going to go to physics and box collider. So first thing, I want to drag this below our uh, below our floor, below our ground, and it's up to you as to how far you want it to be. Um, I like to kind of make sure that it's pretty far down, just so that you can have that 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 aspect of actually falling um, before you die as opposed to just kind of falling off of it and quickly, immediately dying. So I'm actually just going to put this right about here. So now what we can do is we can go to our top view by clicking the Y button up here, um, zoom in past the floor a little bit so we can see our box collider, and let's just click this Edit Collider button over here. And I just want to drag these all four out just far enough so that uh, it covers the entire area that we want 
to hit this collider. So any place that we are expecting to have the possibility of falling, we want to be able to hit this collider from wherever we're at. So I'm just going to drag it all the way out of here. I think it's a pretty good idea to just make sure that it's extended on all four sides. And you just want your, your whole area directly in the middle of this, uh, of this little cube. So I'm going to go to the side view, and I'm just going to make this a little bit thicker here, just because uh, sometimes with colliders, if you're moving too fast and the collider is the box collider is too too thin or too narrow or something, uh, you might just go straight through the collider and it might not detect that you're colliding with it. So I'm just going to make sure that this is nice and thick, and. The important thing here that I want to do is make sure I check this is trigger box. So that's going to allow us to basically use the coding that that uh, we're going to be using. Because if we don't mark this as is trigger, then we're going to crash into this like any other solid object. And then we're going to die. I don't necessarily want to do that because we're just flying out into the void of space here at this point. Um, there's nothing for us to actually run into. So I don't want that kind of effect. I just want to... As soon as we pass through this here, um, I want it to trigger some code. So, uh, make sure, so yeah, make sure trigger is checked. Um, so now what I want to do, I'm going to go ahead and collapse this folder here. And in our asset folder, I'm just going to go ahead and create a new C-sharp script. And I'm going to name this Death Pit. And... As soon as this is done compiling down here, as soon as you create a new script, it'll always start compiling and it won't allow you to do anything until it is done. Uh, we're going to just drag this C sharp script onto our death pit. So now we have this death pit component script here on our object. So let's go ahead and open up uh, Visual Studio and Let's start doing the code for this. You know, Visual Studio has been taking a long time recently, like an ex extremely long time to load up. So I may have to just cut the video here so that you guys don't have to wait with me for this to load. So um, we'll see what happens. All right, so now that uh, Visual Studio is loaded up, for some reason it loaded up in this small window. Um, I don't know why it's never done that to me before. But anyways, uh, let's go ahead and start writing the code for this. So this is going to be really simple, basic code. First, I don't need these this start and void here. So I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of that. And so what... Do I want this script to do? Well, one, I want this script to kill the player. And then I also want this to restart the scene. So these are basically our two main objectives for this particular script. So I just want to put that up there so that um, it'll make it just a little bit easier for me to see what each particular script is for, what I'm going through and whatnot. So, the first thing we want to do is we want to 
um, reference the, the, the trigger aspect of, of this box collider. So what we're going to say is we're going to say void um, on trigger enter. And then as soon as you start typing on trigger and it highlights your on trigger enter here, if you just click enter, it will fill in the rest of that for you. So that just makes it really, really easy to just get everything into here quicker. So basically what it's saying is if there is an object with a collider on it, um, or if there is a, 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 a different object with a collider on it that enters this trigger area, then this code is going to happen. So, and the code that we want it to run, we can just say destroy and in parentheses other dot game object and then end it with a semicolon. And that line of code will just kill it. We'll just completely get rid of our player in the hierarchy altogether. Um, so let's go ahead and save that really quick and go back into Unity. We can let it compile for just a moment. And if we go ahead and hit play here, you'll see that when our player runs off of this platform here and hits that trigger area, um, he should just disappear. And see, if you look into your hierarchy, he's no longer up here at all. So um, it also makes it so that we have this constant error going on. It says the object type transform has been destroyed, but you're still trying to access it. What that's referring to is um, this, uh, this main camera has this third-person orbit cam script on it that is looking for the transform of that player, and it can't find the transform of the player because there is no player anymore. It, it, it just completely disappears from up here. So another way we can do this so that we can keep our player in the game and we can do with it what we want, a really simple way of doing that is instead of using this destroy other game object, we can say... Um, let's go ahead and comment that out. We can say other dot game object dot set active, and in parentheses we can just say false. Oh wow, false, like that. End it with a semicolon, and save that. So basically, what that's going to do is it's going to look at the other game object, and it's going to set it either active, uh, true, or false. What that is referring to is this button. Oh, I gotta let it compile before it lets me do anything. So it's referring to this little toggle right here. So if this is checked, the set active is true. If this is unchecked, then it is false. So what that line of code is going to do is set this to false like this. And our player over here will, uh, it'll kind of get grayed out a little bit transparent. Um, and you'll see that he's no longer in the scene. So I'm going to reactivate him, and let's kick, click play and see how, make sure that this works the way that we want it to. So if we run off of the edge here, drop straight down, as soon as we hit that trigger, you'll see the check mark goes away, he is grayed out here, our player is gone in our scene. So perfect, now what we can do is, now what we'll have the ability to do is bring him, for instance, like bring him back. Oh, I guess we can't do that right now because he's stuck in the trigger area. But uh, now we can, basically through code, we can still manipulate this player object however we want it. And for all things considered, he's no longer even in the game at this point. But he's still here. So anyways, it just makes it so that we have more control over what we're doing as opposed to just killing off the player and needing to put in another player object at some other point in the game. It, it's just easier to do it this way. So now what I want to do is I want to make sure that we can restart the scene so that we're not just stuck underneath um, that floor area. So for us to do that, we need to be able to access... Uh, the uh, 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 scene management here. So up here at the top underneath using Unity Engine, we're just going to type using Unity, oh, 
Unity Engine dot scene management and end with a semicolon. And that's going to just give us access to all of the scene management uh, things in Unity for us to use. Um, so underneath uh, this other game object set active false, we're going to say uh, we want to say scene manager dot load scene and in parentheses we are going to say scene manager dot get active scene oh boy which one is this um, get active scene oh geez Oh, you know what? Let's do this a different way. Um, we can actually, since we we don't have to get into this deeper coding of this for right now, um, what we can actually do is, before we go any farther here, let's go back into Unity really fast. And if we just go to our build settings, we go to File, Build Settings, or we can hit Control-Shift-B. Um, we want to make sure that our scene is actually in our build settings because this is what uh, this is what Unity is going to build the game based off of. We're going to we create all these different scenes, and then those are stored in packages called scenes, and then we put them into this build in a specific order, and then Unity will build the game in that order. So what I want to do is I just want to click Add Open Scene. And that's going to add this scene here at the build index of zero. And this will count one, two, three, four, five, uh, however many scenes you have in your game. And it's going to build the game in that order. The very first thing that somebody's going to see when they open this game is this first scene, whatever is here in the top section here. Um, down here, we can actually choose what platform we want to build this for. I'm going to keep this on PC, Max, and Linux. Um, you could also do the Universal Windows platform. You have to download an extra little add-on or module in order to do that. Um, same with uh, Apple TV, PlayStation 4, iOS. There's, there's extra things you need to download for Unity in order to uh, do that. Um, and some of them, I think with Xbox One and PS4, oh, maybe just... The PlayStation 4. But for instance, if you wanted to uh, develop something for the PlayStation 4, um, you have to have a different license through Unity in order to do that. So you need to actually get a hold of Unity and set all that up if you wanted to develop for PS4. Um, but anyways, I'm just going to leave this on PC, Mac, and Linux. Um, we're not going to use any of these buttons down here for the moment. But I just really wanted to make sure that we got this in our build settings this scene so what the number that we need is this one right here is going to be zero we only have one scene in our game so let's just go ahead and put in here zero like that and that should just reload the scene that we have so let's go ahead and save that now go back into unity and before we do anything in here I just want to save the game here so let's go to file and save or save the scene and now we can just hit play walk off the edge here let our player die and hopefully the scene will reload the way that we want it to so yeah that works just fine so every single time we run off of this here we're gonna die and the scene's gonna reload so from here we can go on and say, I don't know, maybe he has three lives and he's now down one life, or he just got his health cut in half or something like that, or we have to restart the entire game, or however you want to do that, we have the ability to do that now whenever he dies. So, um, let's see. I think that is going to be everything that I want to do in this episode here. So... I hope you guys enjoyed the enjoyed the video and uh, I will see you next time.